want to test this product. Like really test it. My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Today, I am out for a very wet and windy and cold adventure. You can see on the ground here quite a bit of snow. You can see on the ground here quite a bit of water. The purpose of this trip is simple. I am testing out a product, a survival emergency product. What I have with me today is the Terra Nova Bothy bag. If you're from the UK, you're aware of these. If not, you may not be. This product, this emergency product, this shelter, is very common in the UK. Somewhat in Scandinavia, and that's about it really. They are not used in Alpine regions in Europe, and they're not used in the United States. Now, of course, you may have one or two people here and there, but as a majority, most people do not know of them outside of the UK. In fact, recently I did a poll on my channel here asking people, have you ever heard of a Bothy bag before? Over 95% said no. Only 4% said yes. The Bothy bag is a very interesting shelter. What I have is the two person size. There's multiple sizes out there. Also, there's multiple companies that make this. I have the Terra Nova version. The product itself is very polarizing. And that's because some people like them, some people hate them. And I have to say, since I started testing out this style of emergency shelter, I have heard from a ton of people about them, namely from the UK. There have been those that love them, and again, those that think they're worthless. I'm only beginning to test out this product, so I don't know yet. I do have some initial thoughts, but I'm going to keep those to myself for now. The purpose of this test here is to get an understanding of how this product performs in wet, cold, windy conditions. The temperature right now, 35 degrees, pouring the rain. It may turn to ice in a little bit, Check this out, folks. This morning, there was 14 inches of snow on the ground. The temperature skyrocketed. It started raining and it started melting. And this is just pure slop. It is awful to hike in. <laughs> it's so slow. It's just so messy. It's awful. Whew. This stuff is deep. Here in a second, I will be going above the tree line out onto a bald, and that's where the testing will begin.
if you want a place to compare this to, it would be Scotland. Very wet, very exposed. This is higher elevation than Scotland though. Very similar, but a little bit more extreme. As you might be able to hear, the winds are picking up. As we come out onto this bald, we should have winds sustained at 30 miles an hour, gusting up to 50. You might be able to see the trekking poles. I have those to assist me with the setup of this shelter. The Bothy bag is designed to be used with two or more people, but if you're using it solo, you have to use trekking poles, your skis, or something like that. And that's because it's human bodies, skis, trekking poles, and so on, that give this shelter its form. One person inside equals very little form to this shelter. With all of the hiking that I've done today, I've gone slow. And that's so that I could stay dry. It's the old survival saying, sweat and you die, get wet and you die. That's what you have to consider in conditions like this. Even in conditions much worse or conditions that are much better. Hypothermia is possible with temperatures in the 50s. All you have to do is get cool, get wet, let there be a breeze, a wind, and all of a sudden, you're in big trouble. You can see the markers there. Those are present so that hikers do not get lost. So we are now at the very top of this bald. What I'm going to do is put myself, plant myself right in the middle. I wanna test this product. Like really test it. So here you go. This is the Bothy bag, emergency shelter. Come on, everyone, let's hop inside. Okay. Let me tell you this much. This is not easy. This is a very small shelter. It's not easy to get in or out of. <sighs> I'll bring you all back in just a minute. <laughs> all right, everyone. I'm trying to get this thing situated here. So I have a trekking pole. There's a little bit of a sleeve here at the very top for a pole to go in. So you can get this material off of your head. This is extremely difficult to navigate, to be honest. This is a very small shelter. You know, I talked about this in the preview. This thing is so small, I can't imagine two people inside of it. I'm not a huge guy by any means, and I take up this entire shelter, and I'm kneeling right now. I'm not even sitting down yet. That by itself is pretty crazy. Okay, so I have a mat here to sit on. God almighty, this, it's so small. <laughs> I'm inside of it. It's insanely windy outside. It's pouring the rain. I am protected, no doubt about it. This is blocking the wind. So far, it is keeping the rain out. But this is going to be a good test for this. Interestingly enough, this product has no seam tape. So I'm interested to see, will this leak eventually? I have no idea, let's find out together. 
I've been inside of this for maybe 20 minutes. It took quite a bit of time to get situated by myself. With another person, it would be easier. In that case, both individuals would simply put their back to the wall and then sit down together. With two people, it would be easier, but at the same time, I mean, the space is so limited. Neither partner would be comfortable. Comparing this to the Fjallraven Windsack, which I tested out, the Windsack has problems. It's not waterproof and ventilation was absolutely atrocious. After being inside of it for an hour, the walls were dripping with moisture. I mean, that is not a good emergency survival shelter. Anything that gets you wet is no good. What it had going for it was size. You could stand up in it, you could set it up, you could tie it off. That way, if you had trekking poles, if you had skis, you could tie that thing up. If you had trees, you could tie it up. You cannot do that with this shelter. And that's a big problem for it. It really is. One thing I have to say about this is that this shelter is extremely uncomfortable. Because it's so small, you basically just have to sit down and that's it. I mean, I might be able to kneel, but if I change position, it changes the shape of the shelter. So if you have mobility issues, if you can't just sit down on the ground at a 90 degree angle, this is not going to be a good shelter for you because basically that's what it's taking. You have to sit down 90 degrees. I've been in this maybe 40 minutes and already I'm getting uncomfortable. Something else, because you have to use your body as the frame for this, my back is right against the wall and I can't really get warm because I'm feeling the wind blow against this material. So it's pulling heat away from my body at the same time. So yes, this is blocking the wind. That's great. But at the same time, the shelter itself is pulling heat away from my body. So check this out. This is leaking actually. Water is coming through the vent absolutely pouring in. I wonder if it's leaking anywhere else. So I've been inside of the shelter here for almost an hour. It's time to get some light going. It's almost dark outside. I have to say that I'm pretty cold actually. This shelter does not retain heat as well as the Windsack 3 does quite chilly in here to be honest. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's quite a bit of moisture inside of this thing too. The walls themselves are soaking wet. There's water pouring through the vent here. <laughs> I'm just having a good old time, everyone. Having a good old time. The water is just pouring through this. You can actually see those droplets right there. I'm not sure if you all can see this or not, but the entire shelter here is soaking wet. The ceiling is soaking wet as well. And all of that is after only one hour of being inside of this. Just one person, one hour. That's pretty crazy. It really is. That's a lot of moisture buildup. Something that you have to consider in a cold weather situation, again, goes back to the most important point you have to stay dry. So let's say that you're in the middle of Scotland, it's raining, it's super cold, you're getting wet. And so you hop inside of your shelter, what do you do? Well, you need to get your wet gear off, right? You need to get some dry, warm clothes on. This type of shelter prevents that from being the case. You can't take off your wet gear because you're automatically exposed to the wet conditions that are inside of this or that will form inside of this. That by itself really limits the use of this. If you're in conditions that are fairly mild, then it's no big deal. But in true cold weather conditions, in mountain conditions like this, you get wet, you die. Sitting inside of this getting soaking wet is a bad idea because the moment that you step out of this, the wind hits you, all of a sudden you're in a hypothermia situation. I mean, it's incredibly dangerous. Military forces all around the world focus their training for cold weather conditions. Do your task, but at the same time, stay dry. It's super important. It's the difference between living and dying. It's the difference between freezing to death and not freezing to death. It's the difference between having hypothermia and not having it. And that's my issue with this type of shelter. Again, if the conditions are fair enough, it's no big deal. I mean, this is just shockingly bad. It really is. 
The WinSec, I have to say, I actually like it a little bit more than this based upon the testing that I've had so far inside of this. At least with the WinSec, even though it wasn't designed to do so, you could pull it away from you. You can get the fabric off of your body so that you can warm up, so that you're not basically having the heat pulled away from you. Also, you're not having the wet fabric touch you, so you can get your wet gear off. You can get dry. Those elements alone are super, super important. Still, I would not recommend the WinSac. And so far with my testing of this, I would not recommend this either. This has a lot of problems. A lot of problems. Again, in fair enough conditions, no big deal. But in true nasty conditions like this, no, not at all. Later on tonight, it's supposed to get down to roughly 20 degrees. That's not all that cold. But being in winds at 30 miles an hour, being soaking wet, I mean, that's extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous. Any sort of survival training, any sort of cold weather military training, every single source will teach you, you have to stay dry. That's the most important thing. And that is something that I wanna say over and over and over again. It's super important. As you might be able to tell everyone, the winds have begun really picking up. I'd say maybe 40, 45 miles an hour right now. This shelter is just flapping away and it's raining inside of here. That, and that's because there's so much condensation on the walls. There's so much buildup. I mean, it's raining. It's absolutely ridiculous, to be honest. It's just insane. It really is. It's insane. Not only that, but this thing is leaking like crazy. There's just water flying into this shelter. I mean, that is just crazy, folks. Crazy. About the only thing that this shelter is doing is blocking the wind somewhat. I mean, that's really about it. I'm going to change the battery on the GoPro and we're going to do some talking about this. And we're going to talk about the claims that the company makes, Terra Nova, because a lot that they state is simply not true about this product. So let's go over the claims made by Terra Nova about this product and let's evaluate those based upon the two hours that I've been inside of this. So again everyone, this has been a wind and rain test of the Bothy bag. I plan to do a cold weather test and that's coming up soon. I'm going to do basically the same thing that I did with the WinSac 3 and we'll push it to its limits and evaluate it. First off, let's talk about what a Bothy is. Bothy is a British term for an emergency shelter used by a single person or a group. And as I mentioned before, these really are very polarizing products. Some people like them, some people don't. Some people say that you should only use these to stop for like a lunch break. Some people say they're not meant to be used as an emergency shelter. Terra Nova, the company that makes these and the other companies who make these, because there's other companies, they all describe these as emergency shelters. So you can stop, have lunch, but you can use these for long periods of time in an emergency situation. For a lunch break, I agree, fine. The only thing is you really have to go fast because you will get wet inside of this. And again, that can be dangerous, but if you're in fair, mild conditions, okay, right now it's about 32 degrees, it's raining, it's snowing. I'm soaking wet from being inside of this. And here in just a little bit, I have to get out and do some hiking and I'm going to be in a dangerous situation. For long term, I say absolutely not, this is ridiculous. And that pretty much goes hand in hand with what I've heard from other people. I've talked with a ton of people from the UK who basically said that this is a short term shelter only. And the con for them, the con for many of them, was that once they left it, they were wet. So I can confirm that it is true. I personally do not recommend any sort of product that will leave you wet after using it. So, I mean, inside of this, the condensation alone is horrific, horrific. 
my clothing is wet. Everything's wet because of that condensation, and that's extremely dangerous. I did do a little bit of searching on YouTube about body bags, and there's not much. It's really interesting for a product that's supposed to be so popular in the UK, there's no videos about these. There's no videos of people using these. I did some searching online. I found a couple of forum posts and that's about it. I also found some articles that basically went on to say that these are popular with like inexperienced hikers and backpackers who are going out for like uh, guided trips. Instructors will get these for like large groups and then let's say it's time to stop and have lunch. That's when they break these out. Everybody hops in, has lunch, and then they continue on. That makes sense somewhat, I guess. I have not seen any reports of people using this in a true emergency situation. And maybe that's for a good reason. Because of this, right? I have no, <laughs> I just don't know. I just don't know. Terra Nova describes the Bothy bag as this. Bothy bags are an emergency place to take cover if the weather suddenly turns stormy and you need protection. These indispensable, lightweight emergency shelters allow the user to create a microclimate that's warm and dry. That is absolute bullshit. It's not warm in here and it's not dry either. It is lightweight though, I'll give them that. They go on to say that these can save lives in an event of someone being injured providing necessary shelter to keep them warm and dry. If they can sit 90 degrees and be wounded for a short period of time, okay, I guess, but long-term, no. We have to talk about comfort here. <laughs> this is the most uncomfortable shelter I think I've ever been in. My hips are absolutely killing me from sitting like this. I mentioned this before, if I change my position, I change the shape of the shelter. So the company goes on to state this, it's well made, the stitching will not come loose, and it will not tear during strong winds. So far, that seems true. High quality wind protective fabric. So far, yes. They say that ventilation is very important in a good quality bothy bag. Ventilation inside of this is atrocious. The vent itself just gets wet, it closes shut, it lays down on the side, water is pouring through that. Ventilation, absolutely terrible. Condensation, absolutely terrible. Waterproofness, no. Again, in milder conditions, okay, right? You can put up with the condensation, you can get a little bit damp. And that may explain why these are popular in the UK. Here in the United States, we can go all the way up to over 14,000 feet. And I mean, this would be a death sentence. This would be absolutely terrible. Nobody in their right mind would subject themselves to what's taking place inside of here with the moisture, condensation, poor ventilation, the leaking, and so on. It is lightweight. It does pack down small. This is the two-person version and only one person can fit inside of this. Yeah, I'm just shocked. I'm shocked at how poor this is performing. So uncomfortable. Oh, jeez. I see why people use this only to stop for lunch because you couldn't put up with more than that. <laughs> this is awful. I think my testing is done here. I've been inside of this shelter for roughly three hours. My plan was to go for longer, but I don't need to. I mean, the condensation is just getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, I might as well be out in the rain. It's so bad. Everything in here is soaking wet. I mean, everything is soaking wet. It's unreal. I tell you what, I'm glad I've done this test. I really am because this is information that people need to know. This is something that people need to be aware of. I mean, 
using this in mild conditions, that's one thing, but using this in true cold weather conditions, just absolutely forget about it. And I say this because I don't wanna see anybody get hurt. I don't wanna see anybody die. I don't wanna see anybody have hypothermia or get frostbite or anything like that. And all of those issues, they're possible with something like this. When you pull this over your head, when you hop inside of it, just one person, the amount of moisture that begins to build up is just insane. I can't even fathom what it would be like with two people. I mean, it would be unreal, unreal. If you love the Bothy bag, that's great. I don't want to hurt your feelings or step on any toes or anything like that, but like, folks, this is, this is dangerous. This is really, really dangerous. I mean, if you're going to stop for 30 minutes, have lunch, that's one thing, but as an emergency shelter, absolutely not. The claims that the company makes, absolutely bogus. I don't agree with them at all, and I've explained why. These are points that can't be argued. I'd love to hear someone try to argue these points. Moisture is okay, right? Getting soaking wet's okay. Not being comfortable, that's okay. It leaking water is okay. It raining down on top of you is okay. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but everyone, I've seen enough. I presented the facts to you all. Make sure to comment down below and share your thoughts. I know there's going to be some polarization in the comments. Some people love it. Say anything that you want to. I do appreciate it. Of course, we are free to disagree here on the Outdoor Gear Review. That's absolutely fine. That's what it's all about. I'm here to share information, my perspective. That's it. That's it. I purchased this with my own money. This is not something that I would purchase again. I would not recommend this at all. You may be wondering, what would I use? A square tarp. That's what I would use. Even above the tree line, you can set up a tarp. You can create all sorts of shelters without trees. You don't have to have trees. You can set up a tarp shelter that will protect you from the elements and keep you dry at the same time. Whereas something like this, in my opinion, again, for the reasons that I've shown, this is just dangerous. This is dangerous. Something to keep in mind while I'm using this shelter in this video, I'm using this like in a freezing rain event, but in the end, using this in snow wouldn't be all that different because it's not really so much about the outside moisture, it's about the inside moisture. So while there is some leaking, that alone is not enough to soak me. It's the condensation buildup that is. That's the problem right now. It doesn't really matter in this episode whether or not that it's raining or if it's snowing. It doesn't matter. It's the overall performance of the shelter that does, and it's truly bad. I will have to think about doing further testing with this because I am absolutely miserable inside of this. I'm not sure if I foresee doing like an overnight trip. I've seen enough. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm super uncomfortable. I really am. What I might do is an emergency overnight adventure with a tarp and show you all how to set it up above the tree line. How to set it up on exposed areas like this. But um, yeah. All right, I'm done. If you like this episode, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like this episode, hit the thumbs down. By the way, because of recent YouTube changes, hitting the thumbs down doesn't matter. <laughs> Isn't that funny? So funny. I really dislike that, by the way. Thumbs down. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to support the Outdoor Gear Review, you can. You can do so through Patreon and here on YouTube. Folks, I'm done. I'm going to pack up and get out of here. I have quite the hike ahead of me. So um, this has been very, very interesting and insanely uncomfortable. Bye for now. Woo! <laughs> Let me tell you, everybody. I am now soaking wet after using that shelter. That's crazy. It's also dangerous. Short term use only, that's it.
<laughs> Slick. Folks, I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>